Hello class. In this lesson we'll be looking at more proofs with parallel lines. We'll also talk some more about the parallel postulate. So to start off, here's a little refresher on some vocabulary that's going to be important. So read those to yourselves. Now one part that's important here is in alternate interior angles, we're talking about points on opposite half planes. So, oh, a half plane is what you get when you cut a plane with a line. It cuts it into two half planes. And so uh, alternate interior angles involve points on opposite sides of a, of a line, of a transversal. So when you think of a definition for parallel, I'm sure you think of the two lines that don't intersect. But there's more to that definition. It also says that they have to be on the same plane. Why is that important? I'll give you a hint. Think in three dimensions. So it turns out that lines that, are, that don't intersect but are not on the same plane are called skew lines. And here's a picture of them in three dimensions. So lines P and N are not on the same plane, but they also don't intersect. So those are not parallel. Those are called skew lines. So that's why that part of the definition is very important. Now, we've already uh, learned about this before. When we have a transversal uh, intersecting a pair of lines, then the lines are parallel if and only if the alternate interior angles are congruent. Now, we want to prove this using our basic rigid motions and our uh, geometry assumptions. And this is really important uh, historically in mathematics. Uh, the part of this is equivalent to the parallel postulate, which is what for thousands of years people tried to prove. And it turns out that it's not provable. It has to be uh, given to you as a postulate. So uh, unfortunately, it can't be proved. But it did give rise to other forms of geometry, which we're going to learn uh, are very important as well. So uh, there's two parts to this. This is an if and only if statement. What does that mean? It means that it goes in two directions. One direction says that uh, if the alternate interior angles are congruent, then the uh, lines are parallel. The other direction, which is equivalent to Euclid's fifth postulate, says that if the lines are parallel, then the angles are congruent. So we want to prove these using our basic rigid motions. So to start off, we want to be able to uh, construct a line that goes through our point P over here. And our goal is to make it so it's parallel, but we got some work to do to get there. So to do that, we want to do a rotation. To start off, uh, pick any point on your line, call it A. Now we want to figure out where the midpoint of segment AP is. We're going to use a ruler for that. So that measures 3 centimeters, so I'm going to put it at 1.5. Okay, so now we want to rotate line L 180 degrees around C. That should give us a line that goes through P. To do that, we're going to pick another point on our line and call it pick uh, point B. And now we want to connect C and B, draw a line through them. Okay, so there's our line. And we want to draw a circle centered at C with radius CB. So put your pivot on C, open up to B, draw your circle. And we're going to name the point where the circle intersects the line that's not B. We're going to call that point Q. Now we want to connect P and Q with a line. And now we're going to call that line that we just drew, the image of line L, we're going to call it L prime. Okay, so now we have a line that goes through P. Now it looks like it's parallel to line L. We're going to prove that in a moment. So we can fill in the blanks here first. So what do we have? We have a rotation. And we, uh, the pre-image is a line, line L. And rotations are going to preserve lines. They're going to map to lines. So L goes to L prime. And what is the image of A under this rotation? A gets mapped to P. It's going to be important. Okay. So these lines look parallel, 
That's not good enough mathematically. We have to prove it. So one common way of doing a proof in mathematics is by contradiction, also called an indirect proof. And to do that, it means you're going to suppose the opposite of what you want to show. And in doing so, you want to show that that's, uh, that's impossible. And so if that's impossible, then the opposite has to be true. So let's suppose that these lines are not parallel. Okay, so if they're not parallel, they have to cross at some point. Let's call that point X. So I have X over here, and we're pretending that these two lines cross at X. I know it doesn't look like it on our picture, uh, but that's, that's okay. We're just, we, we know that this should be impossible, so it's going to look funny. So X is somewhere on line L prime because it's a point of intersection with the two lines. So it must be the image of some point uh, on line L, because we rotated the L 180 degrees around C. And let's call that point S. So since we have a rotation, that means that X and S must be endpoints of a diameter of some circle uh, centered at C. So here's our circle, and point S would be over here on line L. OK, how does that help us? Well, we know that if we connected S and X with a line, that it must go through C because S and X is a diameter and C is the center. So here we have this blue line that connects them. Now, S is a point on L, and X is a different point on L. So based on that knowledge, we know that this blue line must be L because you can't have, in Euclidean geometry, uh, two different lines that go through two different points. They have to be the same line. So we're saying that this blue line has to be L. But why is that impossible? Well, this blue line that we're saying is L also contains C. And we know that C was made so that it wasn't on L. So that's impossible. This blue line can't be L. So we call that absurd. And the reason for that terminology is because in Latin, this type of proof by contradiction is called reductio ad absurdium. All right, literally reduction to absurdity. absurdity. Um, so what do we do here? There are only two things that, uh, that are possible in, uh, by our assumption. We can either say that the lines are parallel or they're not parallel. And so if one of those is false, then the other one must be true. So based on everything we've just done, we showed that if we have a line L and a point P not on that line, then there's another line L prime that passes through P and is parallel to the original line L. So now we've proven this from a basic rigid motions point of view. So now we're going to prove part of that theorem that we talked about earlier, about alternate interior angles. So by this construction, our alternate interior angles here, uh, QPA and BAP, are congruent. And let's see if we can go through these steps here. So what do we get if we rotate uh, segment AP 180 degrees around C? We get PA. You just switch the endpoints. And we said before, what do you get when you rotate A? You would get point P. Now, why are points Q and the image of B on the same side of line AP? Well, you know, since we have alternate interior angles, that Q and B are on opposite half planes. But when we do that rotation of 180 degrees around C, uh, B is going to get mapped to the other half plane. So that's how you know that they will be on the same half plane. That's important for our next step. We're, we're claiming that the image of angle BAP is angle QPA. Why is that true? Well, to do that, we have to show three things. We have to show that the vertices map to each other and that each pair of sides maps to each other.
So we have uh, two pairs of sides and the vertices. So we know that the vertices map to each other. A maps to P. And we know that PA maps to, uh, ray PA maps to ray AP. So all we have left to show is that ray AB maps to ray PQ. And we already said that we know that uh, B is going to map over on the same side as Q. And we know that these angles are congruent. That's how we made this construction. So since that's true, then those two rays must map onto each other. So those angles do indeed map onto each other under the rotation. And so now why can we say that the image of line L is line L prime? Well, we just showed that uh, ray AB maps onto ray uh, PQ. So that's going to be helpful. So that rotation of L is the same as if we had uh, rotated the line AB. Right? That line contains the ray that we were just talking about. And we know that when we rotate it, we're going to get line PQ, and that's L prime. So here is the summary of what we just proved. We showed that when the alternate interior angles are equal in measure, then the lines are parallel. Now the other direction. Uh, we're saying if the lines are parallel, then are the alternate interior angles congruent. That statement has been shown to be equivalent to this one. Can we draw a line other than line L prime that goes through P that never meets L? Well, it might seem intuitively that you're only going to ever have that one line. But that's actually not true in all geometries. In nature, sometimes it's possible and sometimes it's not. Uh, this has to do with what Einstein did with relativity. Uh, if, if you look up about Einstein and non-Euclidean geometries, you'll find out about an experiment that had to do with uh, bending light around the sun. And so not everywhere in the universe is plane light or like Euclidean geometry. So space-time is actually curved. So in order to fix that issue, we have to have the parallel postulate. And so this is not provable. This is a given for this course. Uh, through a given external point, there's at most one line parallel to a given line. So if you look up hyperbolic geometry, there's types of geometry where this is not true. There's another rephrasing of it. So now we want to go in the other direction. Now we have the parallel postulate, and now we want to talk about starting with parallel lines, and now showing that the alternate interior angles are congruent. So to do that, we have our two parallel lines and our transversal. And we want to label the midpoint like we did before. And if we rotate 180 degrees around C, the image of L is, is uh, using function notation. Uh, here we have uh, L under the rotation. That's going to be parallel to L and contain point P. And that's the same as line L prime. Because by the parallel postulate, there's only one line that satisfies that condition. So that rotation has to yield L prime. In particular, angle BAP is going to map to angle QPA. And so since we know rotations are basic rigid motion and preserve angle measures, those two angles are congruent, which is what we wanted to prove. And finally, uh, now that we have the parallel postulate, we can prove all types of other uh, facts using parallel lines. So here's a proof that uh, they say is easily proved. Um, I don't know, I didn't think it was super easy, but you should understand this. That if you have a line, line L1 parallel to line L2, and line L2 parallel to line L3, and they're all in the same plane, then L1 is going to be parallel to L3. And think about how you might want to prove that. 
I'll show you how I did it. I know they said they left it, uh, so it's easy to prove, but here's the proof I came up with. Let's go through this together. So we're going to prove this by contradiction once again. So let's suppose that these lines are not parallel. Suppose the conclusion is false. Well, if they're not parallel, then what do we know about them? Well, they must intersect at a point. Let's call that point X. So there's two things that could happen. If X is on L2, then since L1 and L3 both go through X, then they're not parallel to L2 because they all cross at X. So that would be a contradiction. That would be a point of concurrency. Okay. Well, what if X isn't on L2? Well, then L1 and L3, we know they're parallel to L2, and they each go through X. But this contradicts the parallel postulate because we can only have one line parallel to another that goes through an external point. So in both cases, we have a contradiction, so the lines are parallel. Okay, in this lesson, we learned about uh, writing proofs by applying what we know about parallel lines, and we learned more about the parallel postulate. Thanks for watching this video.